Hi guys, Jim here from drtangenstein.com. I hope this episode will appeal to experienced brewers and newbies alike, really. This is just a, a few tips, things I've picked up along the way that I do to make bottling day go a little bit easier. I'm drinking right now the beer that we bottled the first time we did this video before we realized that we had a mic problem. So, second time lucky. Some of these things won't necessarily save you any time, but they will hopefully make your bottling day run a little bit smoother. Now I hate bottling day, so any suggestions that anyone ever has to make it run a little bit better, is fine in my book. No rinse sanitizer and a bottle washer. Now, sanitizer might not be the sexiest thing to make your bottling day run smoother, but believe me, this stuff goes a long way. This is Starsan, it's the particular brand that I use. There are others available. But basically, when I first looked into buying a no rinse sanitizer, I thought, God, that's, a, that's really expensive. But then it lasted me for five years, so it turned out to be not that expensive. Basically, you make it up, uh, this holds like a million servings. You make it up, store it in a bottle like this or, or other, and you use it like that. And then if you like, you can reuse it. If not, just dump it right down the drain. But the beauty of this stuff is that you apply it, you let it sit, and then you just let it run away. You know, turn your bottles upside down, turn your bucket upside down, and just let it run off. You don't need to wash, like with the old uh, chlorine or bleach based sanitizers that I used to use, you would, you would apply it, let it sit for 10 minutes or so, and then you'd rinse, and then you'd rinse, and then rinse, and you'd rinse, and you'd just be smelling it to see if you could smell any bleach, and you never quite knew, so you'd go again. With this stuff, there's really no issue. You can also, if you like, make it up in a spray bottle because you don't need to rinse it off. You can just spray your surfaces down, spray the inside of your bucket or whatever, and let that sanitize, let it run off. The second thing here is a bottle washer. This bright yellow, for some reason, contraption that I've got here, washes my bottles, sanitizes my bottles absolutely painlessly. Basically, you put a bit of sanitizer, a bit of maybe star sand in the bottom here, then you use the neck of a bottle to push down on this little plunger here. That then shoots a jet of sanitizer into the bottle. It covers the whole of the inside, sanitizes everything, and you just, if you're using Starsan, let that run off, sanitized, jobs are good. An auto siphon. Now, this might not save you any time, but it will definitely save you a lot of effort. Basically, you submerge this hard plastic end into the beer. You give this bit a few pumps and effortlessly the beer starts to flow like wine out of the tube there. And you can just get on with whatever else. I remember I must have spent hours by now just hovering over buckets, cracking my back, you know, making sure, oh, it's not above the level. No, that's in the, that's in the bottle. You don't need to do that anymore. This thing sorts it all out for you. And if the siphon does break, you don't need to get a mouthful of green beer. Just give it a pump. These things also come with these massively handy clips where it just clips onto the auto siphon. This part clips onto the bucket. So if you just rest that, I don't know, a centimeter, a millimeter, depending on how uh, renegade you are above the tube at the bottom, then none of that gets in there. There's also a little, little bit of a filter, but I really wouldn't risk it. Batch priming. Now, there are other ways to save time priming beer, whether you get the little uh, carbonation capsules that they have, or if you use some kind of syrup, I, I don't know. Personally, I like this way the best. Basically, you figure out how much beer you have, 19 liters. Figure out how much sugar you want. I don't know, five grams per bottle. Weigh it out, 
dissolve it in a bit of hot water. You really don't need a lot of hot water. Throw it in there after you've racked. It's effortless and it makes sure that every bottle has exactly the same amount of sugar in. So if you get it right, they're all right. If you get it wrong, then that's on you. A bottle in wand. Now this pretty low tech piece of gear will save you so much time and effort. This is essentially just a hard plastic tube with a, a little button on the end. The idea is you fit this to either the tube that you're, the, that you're siphoning with, or if you'd like to go another way with it, get a bucket with a tap on it like this and just fit it onto the tap. Basically, this generates or goes under vacuum until this button is pressed on the bottom of your bottle. Once the bottom of your bottle's on this, the beer starts to flow. As soon as you take it away, the beer stops, which means that you don't have to keep looking in the bottle, how much is in there, am I about there? Okay, get the tap closed really quick. There's none of that anymore. Push the bottom of the bottle onto this when you want it to come out, take it away when you don't. It's that simple. Also, the genius that designed this thing made this about the right volume that you would like to leave in headspace at the top of a bottle. So you don't need to worry about, ah, is that the right amount of headspace? Is it not? Have I overfilled it? Have I underfilled it? Just fill it right to the top. And then when you remove the wand, it's the right amount of headspace. Swing, top, bottles. Now this one kind of seems obvious, but people still buy cappers, so it can't be that obvious. Basically, actually the first time we did this video, I had a capper disaster where I smashed about five bottles just because the capper didn't want to play that day. Get yourself down to your local pub, uh, bar, whatever, and rescue a crate of these. They'll be happy to give them to you, I'm sure. Uh, whether it's Grolsch or Bernard or just a random German Pilsner that I've never heard of before. Loads of brands use these and they're just sat there in pub, uh, in pub beer gardens right now uh, looking for a new home. Basically this means that you don't have to fill all your bottles and then go around again, rest in your carefully sanitized bottle cap on top and then line it up the capper perfectly and then hoping that you have the right amount of pressure. There's, it's a thing of the past. Get yourself some swing top bottles close like that. I've showed you all these things now. Let's see how they all work together. Let's bottle some beer. Right, I'm going to use my pre-sanitized auto siphon to rack into my pre-sanitized bottling bucket. Now, I've cut this tube in perfectly. You might want to have a look at cutting your own tube in. It's quite important when you're bottling uh, a large amount of beer like this to, to not introduce too much air into it. So you really want the tube to be submerged as the beer's flowing in. So let's make sure we don't disturb the tube at the bottom. Kind of see that. That looks good. As I say, a couple of pumps. And that should be, that should flow now until it's empty. I'll have another look back once it gets a bit further down, but for now, it's pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is batch prime. So, like I said, I've weighed out enough sugar here to bottle uh, what was 19 litres in the bucket. So I'm just going to use as, as little hot water as I can. You really don't need a lot. It looks like you're going to need loads, but you really don't need a lot. Now, chemists are always trying to recrystallize stuff from minimum amount of solvent. So let's see how I do here. Do I gauge it just right? As I say, you can get carbonation capsule, capsules and stuff like that, but I just think that putting individual amounts of sugar into each bottle is just really annoying. So this way is much easier. I did too bad there. All done. 
Right, so as this is flowing around in there now, this is the perfect opportunity to just throw that in. The, the swirling of the beer at the bottom, like it's not splashing, but it is swirling, and that's gonna mix it all up. Okay, beer's racking, auto-primed, don't need to worry about that anymore. Next thing is my bottles. <laughs> Bottles are probably the worst part of bottling day, really. I mean, the racket isn't so bad. The priming is a breeze now, thanks to our new technique. But there's just not really a lot of ways of getting around, you know, 24, 30, however many bottles you've got. So if you can, do this. I'd say just two pumps. It's done. Obviously cheated a bit here. Done those. So once you've sanitized, you obviously need them to drain. It's a no-rinse sanitizer, but it does have to drain off. You can leave it in there, but what why why leave it in there? Just just get rid of it. So you can get bottle in trees. Um, so these are you know little plastic contraptions where you have sort of little arms coming off. Looks a bit like a Christmas tree that you put bottles on. You can get those, but if your local bar that you rescue your swing top bottles from is generous enough and they give you a crate, you just do what I'm doing here and just turn them upside down in the crate. Works pretty well. So something, if you are using swing cap bottles, something you need to pay close attention to uh, is that the cap also is submerged in the sanitizing solution as you dip there. You know, if you're using separate crown caps, uh, you can do that separately, but obviously with these things, they don't come off. So you just need to make sure that the bottom of the bottle cap is sanitized as a little dunk. It's like run off in the crate. All done. Okay, so I'm gonna There's a little bit left. I'm just going to Okay. Beer is racked. The television, I've elevated it so that you can see the handy tap on the bottle and bucket. Like I say, you don't need one of these, really. You can just siphon straight out of the bucket uh, into your bottles. I like doing this for two reasons. One, you get your beer off the trube so you can batch prime uh, without worrying about stirring the, the trube back into everything, uh, which sounds a bit horrible. Uh, and two, uh, if you're lucky enough to get zero degree winters like we are here, you can rack off into this the day before and put it outside and you get a little bit of a cold crash effect going on. You know, it clears the beer a little bit. Right, so our bottles are sanitized, our beer is racked. Now it's time to bottle. Like I say, the bottling wand just fits right onto the edge there, right onto the end of the tap. This is obviously pre-sanitized also, don't worry about that. And it's really as simple as just lifting the bottle, turning the tap, pushing the button and just letting the beer flow out. Now, depending on how, like what angle you press this, this at, uh, the, the flow rate might vary, but you can pretty much see where it is. And like I say, it's coming to the top. Slow down a little bit. There you go. So that was a full bottle a second ago, but I've removed the wand and now the headspace is perfect. I'm luckily using swing top bottles. That one's done. All right, let's do the rest.
All right, so I won't put you through uh, me bottle and the rest of it, but so far that's, that's about 10 minutes since I started racking. So with the sanitization of this and this, on top of that, I call that a 20, 25 minute bottling day, which is not bad at all. It, it certainly is better than the alternative. So I'm gonna finish these up. Let me know how you get on with this stuff and uh, happy bottling day. Let me know you get on with this stuff and also let me know if there's anything that you do that I don't so that I can speed up my bottling day even more. This stuff that I've mentioned today is, is fairly widely available. Uh, you probably head down to your local brew shop and, and grab it, but just in case, I've put some links down below uh, if you wanna check them out. As always, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, follow me on Twitter, at Dr. Tankenstein, and if you want to see more from me, head over to www.drtankenstein.com for the blog and old posts. Thanks.